Hey guys, Prepared Wanderer at home today, and I wanted to walk you through my winter camping bag. I'm getting ready to go on a trip here in a couple weeks. It's definitely going to be below freezing. Um, we got just just got a fresh layer of about five six inches of snow here in Ohio, so winter is here. Um, it's time to go through the camping bag, make sure that I have all the right supplies, and why not take you guys along with me as I go through the bag and show you what I take and explain why I take it. And hopefully that will help someone else who's just getting started because uh, it can be a little daunting going winter camping if you're not prepared. So stick around. So the backpack that I use is the Mystery Ranch Glacier. Um, this is a good size backpack. I think this is around 60 to 70 liters if I remember correctly. Um, so it's definitely a good size bag. Holds a lot of gear uh, and it holds enough for winter and you really need a good size bag to do winter camping. Don't try to jam all your winter gear into a summer bag. You're going you're gonna to regret it. <clears throat> you're going to have stuff hanging off the sides of it. So if you can really go for two packs, um, or at least a big pack that covers all your bases, that's the way to go. Always buy a bigger pack than you think you need um, because you're going to fill it, and especially with winter gear. Um, so right off the bat on the outside of my pack, um, I've got side pockets here, and I carry, these are my, my primary cutting tools. I carry a CRKT Woods Kogan. This is their Tomahawk. Um, I've modified mine. I've added uh, this paracord wrap uh, that helps keep the head tight and also protects the, the pole um, when, um, when chopping. And then I've added um, uh, some, some sticky tape on the handle just to give me some grip. And I like this particular model because um, when pounding tent stakes into the frozen ground, it's nice to have this um, hammer feature. So um, I've done, I've used both ones with and without, and I'm leaning more towards this now. So it, it's, you're going to need some kind of large cutting tool, like a hatchet or an axe or a tomahawk, because you want to get to the center of dry wood if you're going to be using a campfire. And uh, it gets harder and harder with just using a knife in the winter time. You definitely want something that has some some power behind it and some weight. So this is what I use right now and it works pretty well. I also carry a silky uh, big boy saw. Um, of all the saws that I've reviewed and I've used, this one gets used the most. Uh, you can tell it's dirty, it's been used. It cuts like a laser and when people see this thing in action in the field they're always amazed at how well it cuts and how quickly it cuts so it does a great job and um, it's it's a good size for winter camping you can get into some some bigger stuff with this pretty easily um, so that's always with me and on this side over here stainless steel water bottle uh, stainless steel because if my water bottle freezes I can put this in the fire or on top of my stove and get this thing heated up and, and uh, loosen up the water. I can also boil in it. It's a single wall water bottle. Uh, a lot of different ones on the market out there. This is the one that I'm using right now. Um, I've also got a clean canteen 40 ounce that I might use instead of this one but uh, I've got stainless steel water bottles that I use for winter uh, specifically. Down here, um, this is the One Tigress Iron Wall TP, and I've done a setup video on this, um, and I've only camped in it once in wintertime. That was last winter. I haven't used it this winter yet, and I'm going to use it for my next trip. So definitely look for some videos coming up in the future of me using this. This thing is awesome for cutting the wind. It's easy to set up. Um, it's enough room for me and it has the bonus feature that I can add a stove to it if I want to. Um, so that's uh, something I'm, I'm starting to experiment with and uh, hopefully it's something that I put into rotation here full time. Now, one thing to note when I'm talking about winter camping and with this bag, um, I'm not backpacking miles and miles in to a campsite. Um, uh, I'm usually um, probably hiking in, 
you know, less than a mile to a, to a campsite. So I have I have my truck to rely upon. And that's where a lot of times I keep extra water, uh, extra food, extra layers if I need them. That's my kind of my my backup. Um, I know a lot of guys hike a lot farther and backpack a lot further, so their considerations for their gear is going to be a lot different than mine. Um, keep that in mind when you're looking at this because this is not an all-inclusive bag that will cover every scenario. Um, it covers my scenario and how I camp. And right now I'm working um, uh, camping in base camps that are close to vehicles that are easy to access uh, by hike, a quick hike. Um, but you know you still have to have everything in a backpack and you still have to be mobile um, you can't be carrying arm loads of gear around with you so <clears throat> um, hopefully maybe later this winter when there's still some more snow I can do a little um, uh, pull a sled behind me too and that way I can take even more gear um, but I think the basics are pretty covered in this setup right now now additional cutting tools is something that I carry with me and on me is my neck knife and this is probably the most useful piece of gear that I've found for winter camping is a neck knife because you're all layered up it's hard to get to your belt so your belt knife is not going to be accessible um, but a neck knife you can get to it very easily and this Mora Eldris um, has really performed very well um, I love this thing. Uh, my last camping video, um, I talked about it a little bit. Um, it just performs all the tasks that I need in camp and is very easy to get to. So um, it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's very sharp, uh, works really well. And uh, I would definitely suggest considering getting a Mora Eldris or some kind of similar neck knife and carrying that on your person when winter camping. Uh, makes your life so much easier because you're not fumble, trying to get into your pockets, get a, a knife off your belt. Now, with that said, I do carry a bigger knife, or I take a bigger knife with me, I should say. I don't really carry it. Um, I bring my SE six um, you need a bigger knife um, for cutting into wood and doing wood processing and I like to have it um, um, it's just one of those things that I can't go in the field without a, a larger knife so having a, a good sized knife like this paired with um, a neck knife a small neck knife covers all my bases for me pretty well um, for gear and I keep that right here in the side pocket pretty easy to get to um, right there so top pocket up here this is kind of my personal item so I've got a set of eyeglasses I've got toilet paper I've got my hygiene kit which has um, different things in that uh, I've got contacts that I wear so I have to have contact solution in a case and um, a few other personal items and there's some toothpaste and uh, some headache medicine and things like that just small necessities so keep that up front so I can get to it fairly easily there's another pocket back here on the top lid this is kind of miscellaneous items that um, that you're gonna need uh, throughout the day so I bring some hand warmers in case my hands get cold I can throw those in my gloves. I can throw those in the bottom of my sleeping bag. Definitely a bonus item to have. Um, I have a way of hanging my backpack off of a tree so it's not sitting in the snow on the ground. So that's just uh, some webbing and a carabiner. Uh, a good size hunk of 550 cord for tasks around camp. You don't know what you're going to be doing so this is helpful. Course, a really good headlamp. Just got this one in, haven't had much chance to use it yet. This is from Through Night. Um, really a cool uh, headlamp, and I'll be doing a review on this shortly. But uh, you definitely want a good headlamp, and this is this is a, a decent one. It's something that's not cheap and gonna crap out on you when you're out in the field. Um, I carry a small fire making kit, and in here. Um, are the essentials for making a fire. So of course a ferro rod, uh, real helpful. Um, 
some uh, fire fuzz from black and white fire starter so those are just kind of an impregnated cotton swab of some sort cotton ball of some sort um, because you know when you're trying to get a fire going in the winter time sometimes you need a little extra help and you want to get the fire going right away you don't want to be messing with it and freezing your butt off so having some kind of fire starters along with your kit is definitely um, a good backup to have and then um, probably one of the most in invaluable pieces of fire making equipment that I have and is used a lot on camping trips is a fire bellows um, you can you know easily blow uh, coals, hot coals into flame when you're putting wood on and um, it, this, has be, this has saved my bacon many times and um, it's used a lot so I would definitely get, consider getting one of these and throwing it in your kit um, it'll make your life so much easier having a fire bellows really a great piece of kit and then um, a couple more fire starters these are from Black and White Fire Starter as well this is their brand branded fire starter. Um, this is a cake that has sawdust and it's been impregnated with uh, I think some wax and some other accelerants um, so I can break that up and get a fire going pretty quickly so I carry a couple of those with me just in case. And that covers all the small items that I carry. Now we'll get into the bag. Definitely want extra room in your bag so you can add more stuff. Um, sometimes it may be colder and you need to add, ex add some extra layers. I don't carry a lot of extra layers with me. Most of everything I'm wearing is what I'm going to be using throughout the weekend of camping. I may throw in an extra pair of socks to change into. But other than that, I don't carry extra pants or shirts or things like that because um, I just don't find it necessary. I don't sweat through my stuff that much. Um, and uh, I can get dry pretty quickly by the campfire so um, long as you're you know keeping good management of your clothing uh, you'll be fine and you don't have to worry about uh, changing layers all the time and that just takes up a lot of room in your bag so I don't carry a lot of extra layers um, this is um, a Kifaru uh, pullout and this is kind of my, my little mini kitchen bag. It just has some different things in it. I've got a, a nice spork that I carry. I've got some hot sauce and some soy sauce and just some um, things that I can add to soups and things to give them flavor. Um, some more hot sauce, some salt and pepper. And then I've got um, uh, a drip coffee maker from sea to summit it go over, goes over my mug and then I can put a filter in there and uh, make some coffee sometimes I like to bring uh, real coffee with me other than the instant stuff so there's that and then uh, um, a folding bowl that I can put soup in and this um, is kind of an interesting item instead of buying the more expensive folding bowls that you see at REI um, I go to Amazon and get the folding dog dishes. Uh, these are, I think, for like six or eight bucks. I got a two pack of these, and they're really big and sturdy. And uh, they're going to hold a lot of soup, and they fold down flat, weigh hardly anything. So get a couple of those, throw those in your kit. Um, definitely a bonus item. And then a butane lighter, of course. Always got to have a butane lighter on you, and a couple extras in your bag. I always have two or three butane lighters with me on a trip. Um, still in the cooking area I've got an insulated mug um, this is from GSI I love this mug because it does a couple of things it is insulated it is small it doesn't take up a lot of room it has a removable lid and a pour spout so I can get into it pretty easily but um, if you remove the cover it has markings on it so um, up to two cups so I can actually um, you know make a dehydrated meal pretty easily and, and use this as a measuring cup so that's a handy item to have as a measuring cup especially with winter camping because you're, you're probably going to be eating a lot of uh, dehydrated or freeze-dried meals 
and uh, knowing a precise amount of water to add is helpful and getting a good mix. So having a, uh, a measuring cup is really helpful and this GSI cup does the trick. Next is uh, my cook kit. This changes and varies uh, from trip to trip. Sometimes I take different things with me. Right now I've been using this pretty steadily and I really like it. Um, this is a titanium pot from Bush Buddy. Of course it's got handles, but what I like about it, it has a bail. And that way if I want to cook over a fire, I can hang this over a fire and it's just easier to work with with a bale. Also has a lid that has um, pour holes in it so you can drain your, um, your pasta or rice or whatever you're cooking. Um, I always bring a rag of some sort to clean up with. Um, this is separate from a bandana that I would normally carry but it's good to have some kind of cleanup rag to clean your pot with and that way it's dedicated just to doing that that chore. Um, uh, I got this little tiny uh, stove. I think this is, I got this off of Amazon and uh, it's a Chinese company. I think they're called BRS or BPS. I can't remember exactly. I'll, I'll put a link down below in the Amazon store for it, but it's really inexpensive little stove. Um, but if it fits the fuel canisters perfectly and it's big enough to, to support my pot easily. Um, it's inexpensive, like I said, I, th I think it was under $17. Um, so if you're looking for, uh, you know, a nice little stove, uh, this is definitely um, a good starter stove to go with. There's lots of stoves in the market. It's a very personal uh, kind of thing when people pick out stoves. You're looking for different features, different sizes, different weights. Um, I wanted something inexpensive and small. I wanted it to be very small so it doesn't take up a lot of room in my kit. And uh, this did this uh, has done very well by me. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Folds up really nicely. I believe it's titanium. Um, Look how small that thing folds up. It's just itty bitty, but uh, it's great. Um, everything fits in that pot. That way I don't have a lot of excess stuff uh, running, running around in my bag. Okay, so now <clears throat> last thing uh, to talk about for kitchen items is food. Now I've done a video on camping food and um, so go back in the channel history and look for that because it's pretty detailed. It goes into a lot of detail about different things that I take with me. Um, I like to pack my stuff in a clear plastic bag so I can see the contents very easily. Um, most of the food items that I have I can get at the grocery store. I eat things like ramen and uh, chicken or tuna packets. Uh, Let's go through some of the stuff real quick so you guys get an idea of what's in here. Um, Idaho instant mashed potatoes are a nice hearty item. Add a little bit of meat to it, like some chicken or some spam or something like that, and you've got a, you got a decent meal. Um, of course, ramen is uh, always a, a staple item, quick and easy. Add stuff to it. High in salt, uh, got to take that into consideration with your health and uh, how you like to eat, but um, you can also eliminate the salt packet. You don't have to put the flavoring packet on it. You can add your own flavoring to it, but the noodles are um, will fill you up for sure and they cook very quickly. Um, and then of course I bring dehydrated meals. Uh, there's a lot of different brands out there. I use a lot of Mountain House. This happens to be Coleman brand, which I don't think they make anymore. I just happen to have a stockpile of this in my food bag. Um, so I've been working my way through these, but uh, you know, it's pasta with a flavoring of some sort. Um, but the Mountain House meals that you can get at Walmart and on Amazon are excellent. Uh, a little pricey, you know, eight to nine dollars uh, a meal. 
but uh, they will fill you up. They cook really easily. They're easy to, to work with, and uh, they have really great flavor. So if you're looking for variety, uh, <clears throat> that's the way to go. But um, I just try to have a variety of items. Here's some uh, chicken gravy mix that I picked up. I can add that to, to noodles and make a, a pretty hearty lunch. Um, these little individual Jif peanut butter packages are awesome. Spread those on a bagel or some crackers and you got a really great snack. Um, of course, Cliff Bars or other kinds of bars. I like Lara Bar. Um, I like Kind Bars. Those are good as well. A lot of different ones out there. So, you know, it's all personal taste. Whatever you... Add in. And the great thing is that nowadays there's so much stuff in the in the grocery stores out there. You don't have to go to a camping store to buy all your food like you used to back in the old days. <clears throat> you can go to the grocery store and stock up. And ha everything's been uh, kind of downsized and put into individual packaging. So tuna, chicken, spam, uh, different types of Asian and Indian foods I've found um, in individual packets that you just have to heat up. Um, it's just, it's great. <clears throat> There's so much variety out there, so it, anything to fit your taste. So that's it for kitchen stuff. So really the last thing that we need to talk about is sleep system, and that's um, uh, really important because this is the area that you don't want to cheap out on is your sleep system um, being uncomfortable at night when the temperatures drop um, suck and it will ruin your trip it will make you go home early um, so you want to spend some good money on your sleeping bag and spend some good money on your pad the pad is really important and um, I highly recommend a insulated pad for winter camping. This is from Climate, and this is the insulated Static V Recon. It's a four season sleeping pad. Um, I've been using this uh, for the past couple of years now, and it is very comfortable. Uh, it uh, I can sleep on my side or my stomach or my back and I don't have any issues whatsoever and it keeps me warm, gets me up off the ground and it's not terribly big, it doesn't take up a lot of room in my pack so look at those. Um, there's other brands out there, I think Climate um, has some good prices on their sleeping pads but definitely get the insulated model for winter camping, it's going to, uh, it's going to be a game changer for you. Another thing is um, you want to make sure that you're off the ground and dry, uh, especially if you're camping in snow. So you're going to need some kind of ground cloth. What I use is this um, Tyvek uh, construction material. And uh, if you can have access to this stuff, I think you can probably get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. But I've had this for years and uh, it folds up flat. Uh, takes up very little room. It's very durable, super lightweight, um, but it keeps me dry. And I like the white because it reflects really well underneath my tarp or inside my tent. <clears throat> I can see uh, contents of my tent better with this. So consider getting something like this as a as a ground cloth. And then, last but not least, is you need a good sleeping bag and. Um, My sleeping bag is a uh, Big Agnes encampment. It's a 15 degree bag. Um, I've had it down to zero and it, I'm fine in it. Um, you know, I don't know if you need a, a zero or below zero bag. It probably really depends on how often you're going to be camping in those kind of conditions. It seems like for winter camping for me, I'm more below freezing. So anything 32 and below. 
um, down to zero is about where I'm at. <clears throat> I don't really go out when it's below zero that often, so if I was to go below zero, I may add another bag or a wool blanket or something like that on top of this, but for the most part, this 15 degree bag has really served me very well. It's a long, extra long, extra wide bag, so I've got room in it to move around and I can wear layers. Um, often I will sleep in my wool pants, um, or a, uh, a wool shirt um, as an extra layer. Um, I know there's a lot of different uh, philosophies on what you should be doing for winter camping. Some guys strip down to their long underwear um, to sleep in. I have have found that to be uncomfortable, not enough layering for me. Um, I like to go in with extra layers and then if I get hot in the middle of the night I just take those off as I go and I can adjust. But um, I prefer uh, to sleep with uh, my clothes on, so that's that's just the way I do it. Um, so this 15 degree bag from um, Big Agnes has been been phenomenal for me, and I've had this for years, and it's been on a lot of camping trips, and um, I use it all the time. And I got um, I would recommend a good waterproof storage bag for your sleeping bag. That way, um, if your backpack does get wet um, with wet snow or rain. Or freezing rain uh, your sleeping bag is dry you want to make sure your sleeping bags dry that's just really important it's gonna take a while for that thing to dry out um, so this uh, OR um, hydro seal bag is completely waterproof and um, protects my sleeping bag because this is the most important piece of equipment that I have with me is my sleeping bag and I want to protect it so that's what I use so all right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. Make sure you check out, check out the Facebook group and Instagram. Lots of extra content on those. Check out the Amazon link down below to my Amazon store. Some of this gear will be in there. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.